thing to also mention before we get started on the scaffold generation is uh, if you're doing this at home and you're doing it for real application, make sure you are using Git for your version management. I use it on a daily basis and uh, I'm not putting it into this one directly, into this course directly, just because I did it in the last course and I don't want to waste your time with some redundant things. Uh, but in any application, it's something that you really need to use. Uh, make sure that you are posting a commit and uh, committing your code up after every significant change and doing some of the things I taught in that course just because uh, it is a best practice and it will come in very handy. I'm actually doing it on my side all the this code will be available uh, to be uh, selected and uh, you'll be able to access all of it and on a per video basis. So uh, check the different show notes uh, for access to that code so you can follow along and make sure that uh, the code that you're typing in matches what I'm doing. So uh, without further ado, we're now going to create our uh, scaffold for our posts. And to do that, I'm gonna do Rails G scaffold. And I'm just gonna call this post. Title is going to be a string data type. And the image is going to be a string. Uh, we don't store images directly. We're going to use a CDN to store them. Uh, we're just going to store uh, the uh, the URL, the path, that kind of thing to it. And uh, that's all we really need to reference it uh, so that we don't clog up our database with storing files. That's something you're never really going to want to do. So uh, it's just going to be a string. And then we're going to add a description, which is going to be of type text. So we're going to run that. And after all of that's done, I'll be able to open up a migration file and see what that creates. Uh, as you can see right here, it's created the migration file and then it's created everything from tests to updating our routes to all the different files associated that we are going to use for it. So uh, I'm going to open up that code just so we can see it and go into our uh, new migration. So go to database, migrate, and then click to see it here. And I'll zoom in a little bit on it so you can see it a little bit better. And so you can see right here that it's creating a table for us called posts, and it's taking the uh, string data type, the uh, for title, string for image, and text for description. It's also adding the default timestamps, which are created at and updated at, which are very handy, and that comes just by default. Uh, if you're not that familiar with Ruby, then uh, one thing that you should be able to see right here, just to get a good idea for how it works, is create posts is a specific class in Ruby. It inherits from another class called Active Record Migration. And what that's going to do is it's going to give us access to this change method. And inside a change method, it's going to do this, perform this action. And the action is a block, meaning it's a block of code. And so you're going to call create table and the table is called posts. You're passing in a symbol here called post. And then it's going to iterate. And this T is just a iterator variable. Uh, there's nothing really that important about it. If I wanted, I could call this X and then I could change each one of these to X and this would work the same way that it would with T. Uh, the T is just what they name it um, by default. But what this does is it gives us access to the iteration um, to what that value is at that time. And so uh, if you don't really understand it, it, it's something that just comes by default for you, so it's nothing that uh, you need to know that well. But if you really want to learn Ruby and want to learn uh, kind of how to master it, this is something that you're going to be doing on a pretty regular basis. So you should recognize it when you see it because you can also do these type of things yourself. You're going to be using blocks and uh, uh, putting those inside of methods pretty regularly. So just get familiar with that side of it. But this all looks good. So I'm going to close out of this. And and get back into the console and clearing it go in the top I'm just gonna run rake DB migrate after this migration occurs then it's gonna update our schema file and so if I go into schema 
which is now created, you can see I now have a schema file here, which has posts, which has a title, image description, all of these things. And now we have access to these. And so uh, you can do anything from being able to uh, create your new posts or you can even jump in the console which is going to be the thing that we do next and uh, it also has all of our views our controller our model files all created for us so uh, in the next episode we're going to see how to play with the rails console to create some things and update and delete and do some things like that and then we're going to get into building the views out